Right then, just a quick video. I'm going to talk about something that's turned into a real bugbear of mine. This subject matter, so many people get it wrong to the point where it's excruciating and hard to just watch and listen to people giving incorrect explanations. I'm talking about the F drives on trains. So, so many people don't have a clue how it works, yet they often talk about it like they understand it, and I find it really excruciating. One of the big things that train enthusiasts always seem to go on about is IGBT versus GTO. While at the same time, they have no idea what they're talking about on the subject, because IGBT, GTO, or any other thyristor or transistor technology used in VF drives, that is not an accurate explanation of how the sound is made. Because while the different technologies of VF drive, and the older the technology, the more limited it is in its switching capability, which overall ends up with the sounds being created how they are created, just saying the technology of a VF drive is not an adequate explanation. The reason why trains, and in particular the 1996 train, makes the sound it does is due to artificial sine wave generation. This is because the motor is an AC non-synchronous motor. This motor has to have a frequency put into the motor close to the motor's current rotating speed. So if the motor is rotating at 10 hertz and you want the motor to speed up, you need to put in something like 13, 14 hertz, a speed faster than its current speed to speed it up. But if you were to just shove in 50 hertz like it's connected to the mains, that'd not be efficient because the rotating magnetic field in the motor would be 50 hertz and the motor's going 10 hertz. That's too big of a difference. So you have to vary the frequency being put into the motor so the output frequency of the F drive is close to the rotating frequency of the motor. But what causes the sound is not the output frequency. It is the switching frequency. It is the behind the scenes methods being used to create that output frequency. This is to do with artificial sine wave generation. So the output frequency is a sine wave. You are making that sine wave by switching a DC power supply off and on. It is called a switching frequency. Because thyristors, whatever technology you're using, IGBT or GTO, is all the same thing. The principle is exactly the same. It cannot be half on and half off. And that is the most important part of why it makes that sound. It either has to be fully 100% on or fully off. Nowhere in between. So you're having to pulse, you're having to switch your power supply on and off to make that artificial sine wave. You can't just do what a radio does, because a radio amplifier can put in different percentages of power, like amplifier signal, which is at 50%. You can't do that with the F drives. It's either 0% or 100%, nowhere in between. So with the artificial sine wave generation, there's actually two main methods you can do. There's actually a few more methods than that, but for simplicity, there's two main methods. The method which is ideally used in terms of how these things are meant to work is pulse width modulation. Well, technically speaking, all the methods are pulse width modulation, but this method is going by the principle of it, doing exactly what pulse width modulation is supposed to do, what it says on the tin. Pulse width gets modulated. So the switching frequency stays the same while the width of each pulse changes. And that's how you change the percentage of what's been put in the motor. And that can then be used to create your artificial sine wave. On this method, it's not much to be heard because the sound stays exactly the same all the time. So if you've got a thousand hertz switching frequency, no matter if the output frequency is 10 hertz or 20 hertz, the sound of it doesn't change. It will just be a constant 1000 hertz hum. Eee! Like that, it stays constant even as the output frequency changes. But with older technologies, which by the way is not exclusive to GTO or IGBT, in fact the thyristor itself is not the thing of significance, other than the fact that older thyristors will have less tolerances. But let's say on a really old train, let's say your maximum switching frequency is just 400 hertz, so you're having to make a sine wave with just 400 pulses per second. But what if that sine wave needs to have a 50 hertz output? So the output frequency is 50 hertz and the switching frequency is 400 hertz, meaning you get eight pulses per cycle or just four pulses per half cycle, which is an even number. And that is a problem because at this point, the timings no longer work, especially when you need your largest middle pulse at the top of your wave has to be the largest pulse. Four pulses per wave, that's an even number. Your biggest pulse won't be in the middle where it's needed. The timing doesn't work. So when your output frequency is getting close to your switching frequency, 
which will happen a lot sooner and more noticeable on old trains than it does on new trains, but the same thing happens on all trains. It's just more noticeable on the old trains. Another method has to be used, and that method is timed pulsing. So rather than the pulsing being at a set switching frequency, instead it's synchronized to the wave. So, as the output frequency gets faster, the switching frequency also gets faster. So the sound increases, like that. But, due to the tolerances of it, pulses have to be removed as it gets quicker to stop the switching frequency getting too fast for the thyristor. So, pulses have to be removed to keep the switching frequency low within a set range. So this means it could change from, let's say, 7 pulses per output cycle to 5 pulses per output cycle. When that change happens, it sounds distinctive. And that is what makes the sound. It is pulses being taken away from the synchronized time pulses per output cycle. Now, with that said, in Japan, there's VF drive enthusiasts who make scale models of VF drives. I think that's really impressive because they actually make these VF drives that they build. They program them to simulate the sound on trains. So they have these little VF drive scale models re recreating the sounds of their favourite trains, which I think is really great. And make sure you check out their videos because they've got some really good stuff. And it even gets better than that because these Japanese VF drive enthusiasts are actually building their own model sit on trains with homemade VF drives. This has to be one of the best homemade projects I've ever seen. Take a look at this. Then, the next video I'm going to show is one of the best demonstrations I know of on YouTube of how VF drives work. This professor shows it on an oscilloscope and it shows it really well, so make sure you check out the full video. Here's a little extract from this video, which I'm showing under fair use. And you may hear, as we turn up the speed, that it appears to be changing gear. And then we're in top speed and off we go. We can go to a very nice high speed here. Let's listen to that gear changing as we slow down. If we go up in speed now, go back up, we can start to see something else interesting happening. So we just changed another gear. Notice that the chopping still appears to be about the same sort of uh, frequency, which is right. 
The current waveform now is much faster and in fact does appear to have more ripple in it. Well, it probably hasn't got a lot more ripple in it, but the, the uh, induction motor has changed its characteristics a little bit as we speed up and we are seeing a bit more ripple in the current. But notice that this frequency is much higher than it was. Now something else interesting is happening. Now we can see something very interesting happening here in that we're losing a lot of pulses, particularly in the middle of the waveform there. And in fact, we see, appear to have very few pulses there. And in fact, the ripple frequency has gone up a lot. So we've changed the gear again, but this time we're also dropping pulses. We've decided we don't actually need to have uh, so much pulses in there. We want more volts out of the inverter at the higher speed for the motor. Just and as we increase the speed, there we go, we've dropped nearly all the pulses are dropped now. So there's the pulses dropping. Pulses coming back in, a definite gear change, much more noisy now those pulses have come back. Lots more pulses coming in. There we go, very familiar sound to those people who take the train between Cambridge and London. then I've just shown you some really good examples of great videos about VF drives from Japanese VF drive enthusiasts to the professor showing it on his oscilloscope. But with that said there are still train enthusiasts giving out incorrect information about VF drives. This has gone on for many many years. For example the Wikipedia article on the 1996 underground train. For years it showed incorrect information on the Wikipedia article. I really don't know why this particular topic has become such a topic of misinformation. A very well known YouTuber has uploaded a video about the 1996 underground train about why it makes the sound it does. And he got his information wrong. I don't want to sound too critical because this YouTuber has also made some really good YouTube videos about other stuff. Also I don't want to be criticising anyone as an individual so that's not my aim here. Take a look at this clip from his video and look at the thing he gets wrong about the F drives. The supply through the inverter is regulated with gate turn off thyristors. The current and the motors are what makes the noise. As the current increases and the motors respond, so the whining noise gets higher. He claims that the sound speeds up as the current increases. That is not true. Not true at all. If the current increases, that will make the motor louder, but it doesn't affect the sound. The sound is caused by the artificial sine wave generation. The issue here is he's got 196,000 subscribers and now his people commenting in the comment section saying oh now I know why the train makes that sound but the information is wrong which just, which just further adds to the misinformation. Anyway that's all I want to say. I'm not trying to criticise anyone as individual people. I'm more making an overall criticism. I think that's everything I want to say so that's the end of the video.